So, the CSA guide for the Ultimate General Civil War has finished. As of now, a week after the final video went live, I checked the view count of my entire list. Not because I'm obsessed with view counts or anything, I just wanted to see what people watch the most. The most watched video was the first video of the series, with the introduction, music, and then the intro stage. This isn't a surprise. The first video of a series is always watched the most, because that's how people decide if they want to continue. The second is Shiloh, the game's first huge map, and the first one where my friends supplied some voices. Then was the second video of the series, the army organization video, which isn't even a stage, and then the huge battles at Antietam and Chancellorsville, with the Chancellorsville video's views skewed significantly towards the couple minutes of video where my friend wrote the fake letter home from the Confederate soldier. So of the top five videos, it appears that the parts of the series that were most popular were the ones that didn't have me do anything designing stage strategies, proving to me that if I want to be popular on YouTube, I should probably let other people do it for me. Aside from view count is the time commitment. I spent 20 to 30 hours a week designing, recording, and editing the videos of this series, only taking off the week of Christmas and that week I got sick during Gettysburg. This means that I took 14 months of 25-ish hours a week doing this, and I sure as heck wasn't getting paid for it. It's just a hobby. Not that I regret it or anything, I don't feel this to have been a waste of time, but it was horribly exhausting, what with me also having a real-life job and all. Which leads to the big question, will I do a Union Strategy Guide? The short answer to that is, no. However, the longer answer is, not yet. I'm not quite ready to put another year and change of 30 hours a week into this. I have thought about some things, including how to streamline the series to make it both more watchable and more producible, like breaking grand battles that take multiple days into multiple videos, or figuring some way that I can get the army symbols into the editor without manually drawing them every single time. Like, I'm sure there's some way I can save a drawing or something in Adobe Premiere, but I don't know how, nor do I even know how to begin looking for an answer. And right now, I'm just tired. However, that doesn't mean that I won't ever do it. What I will be doing in the immediate future is taking some time off of YouTube. I have a number of things in my real personal life that really needs attending to that fell by the wayside as I was putting more and more time into editing. It's going to be at least a month, although that will put it right in the middle of the Christmas season, so it may not be until a little after that either. Come 2023, I do plan on making more videos, but I also want to try mixing up the formula a bit. Specifically, making a guide that is shorter both in terms of video length and in terms of number of videos. I do have a couple of ideas on games, though I am going to need a new acronym. The games I have in mind would definitely qualify as a strategy guide, but the phrase campaign walkthrough, and for that matter semi-commentary, wouldn't be accurate. The reason is, while they have definite start and end points, there's no fixed structure to be walked through really. They are far more roguelike. Still, I've got a few weeks to come up with it, so I'm not stressed. Also, that's as many hints as you'll get as to what I have in mind. You'll all just have to keep your subs and notifications to me live so that you'll all get rung when it comes out. That's all you're getting, Burb. I hope it's enough to satiate you. So, as for the final part of this wrap-up, other questions. Christian wanted to know how often I played a stage to perfect my strategy for it. Well, first of all, as you can see proof in some of the videos, I sure as heck don't get them perfect. Even in the very last stage, I had a whole script prepared to read when the Union made their massive charge at Fort DeRussi in Phase 3, and then they didn't. But, to a more useful answer, I bought the game a while ago and played through both sides for, you know, fun. I decided to do the CSA side because I had done that one second, so it was fresher in my mind. A lot of the stages, I still had vague ideas of how they played out, so sometimes I didn't even need to do it more than once. The first battle of Bull Run, I just went with what I remembered from the first time, and it ended up working as I remembered. Units floating over rivers notwithstanding. On average, I'd say I played through a stage twice. Once doing what I thought would work, and then a second time trying to improve the result with minor tweaks. The stage I had to adjust my entire strategy the most often was, if I recall correctly, Gettysburg, 
and the stage that I played the most times for any reason was Washington, D.C. The overall strategy worked fine the first time, but I kept replaying it either through misclicks or a desire to make it just a bit better. That it was the series grand finale may have also been in my mind, though I did have to eventually just go with what I had, even if in day two I watched 20 brigades move to a place I wasn't expecting. Christine M. was curious as to the fate of Jimmy J's Johnston. Wait, Jimmy's Junior Johnson? What was his name again? You know what? I'll let him answer that one himself. My dearest Clementine, by the time you read this, you may have received word of my death, but please, fret not. I am alive and well and recovering after our last and crowning victory, fondly dreaming of the moment I can fondly walk across our own porch, through our own front door, and hold you tightly in my arms once again. By the by, remind me to build a porch when I return and fix the front door. No, the letter he received was meant for me. It was a notification of my father's, Jimmy J. Johnson Sr.'s, death. My understanding is that things fell awry when, whilst relieving himself one morning, our postal dispatch officer was trampled by wild badgers, and he died. And in the confusion, the letter bound for me was instead forwarded to you, my next to kin. So if the letter smells like urine and badger, well, now you know why. By all accounts, though, Pa's final battle was a glorious sight to behold. Having run through the last of his ammunition, he found himself separated from his regiment, surrounded by three men who would ultimately be his undoing. After finally beating the last man to death with his own severed leg, Pa saluted his men, sat down, sighed, and had a swig from his flask. Somehow or another, though, a bee had snuck in Pa's flask, and being allergic, well, he choked. And he died. To avoid future complications, I thought I might at least temporarily take my mother's maiden name, Dean. A buddy of mine from the hospital ward, Gilbert was his name, he, he said he thinks Jimmy Dean has a certain ring to it, and I must agree. Sadly, you won't get to meet Gilbert. He was paralyzed by a stray bullet that hit his spine, and... Although he was recovering and in good spirits, well, we woke the day before last to find that he had rolled off his hospital bed in the night and right down three flights of stairs before they caught him. He had broken his neck and, of course, he had died. So now my thoughts turn to you and the future. I thought I might take over Pa's sausage business when I return. You know, I've always loved the feel of meat in my hands and sausage packing is a noble profession that the Johnsons have been at for generations. We could develop new recipes and new packing maneuvers and maybe expand to multiple cities. <sighs> well, a man could get lost dreaming of packing sausage with his beautiful wife, but today, today I'm coming home. With love, Jimmy Dean, formerly Jimmy J. Johnson Jr. So, anyway, that's the wrap-up. I'm off to maintain my personal life and then to maintain my channel with something new. Until next time.